Hi everybody, this is Brian with the Instructional Technology Coordinator team here in the School District of Waukesha. And as we're ramping up and excited for a new school year to come, one of the questions we've been getting a lot of is surrounded around Google Classroom. And what's the best procedure for getting started with the new classroom, a uh, new school year using Google Classroom, having new students come in, maybe new class assignments, but also saving and using some of the stuff that we did last year so that work is, is not lost on us. So as we talk about that, um, let me start by saying this. Our recommendation to you is that we would start each year with a new Google Classroom for a lot of reasons. One, Google Classroom by design always puts the newest content at the top. It's a lot like a blog in that way. And so while last year as your students were going through the class and you were adding new classes, uh, new assignments to your classes, those assignments were popping up near the top. Google Classroom is still not at a place where it's very easy to rearrange and reorder those things. And so it really is going to be most beneficial to your students to start fresh and just like you did last year, see the new assignments or the new posts as they come up and those always being near the top. The only way to achieve that is with a new Google Class. The other thing that uh, is really helpful is you have new due dates, you have new interactions, and so you're not going to be carrying over any of the interactions from previous years when we start up with a new Google Classroom, giving the kids a new fresh space to work in is a really uh, advantageous and beneficial to uh, the kids to do that. So, so how do we get rid of last year's classes without losing all of our work? Well, I'll show you that first. So here I am in my Google Classroom page and here are all my classes from last year. And here's one of the classes that I'd like to get rid of. So I'm gonna click on the three dots and simply click on archive. And it'll give us the warning that says you and your students aren't going to be able to make changes. Archiving is not deleting yet, though. Archive still gives us access to it. We can't modify it, but it gives us access to last year's class without giving us all of that, that uh, in our workspace, without being in our face. So we're going to go ahead and click on Archive. I'm going to do that down here for one more quick. So again, I click on the three dots and I click on Archive. So you can see, if I went through and did that for all of my courses, I would be able to start at a fresh page. Okay. Now, where do those archive courses go? Well, if I click on the three lines here, the hamburger, um, and I go down to Archived Classes, here you can see that I have my archived classes tagged in here. They've kind of got this cross hatching that's over the, the uh, coloration on them, just to indicate that they are archived. Now, if I click on the three dots again, I've got two options. I can restore it, which means it's back to the way it was before, and I can use it and make changes to it if I need to. Kids are all enrolled. It's in our space. It's in their space. They'll see it. Or I can delete it. Now, be careful with delete, because once you delete it, it's gone. There's nothing that we can do to bring that back. It is out of our hands at that point, okay, along with all the assignments in it. Archive is a nice middle ground. It gets it out of your face, it gets it out of the student's face, uh, but it still has our content there. All right, so I'm going to go over to one of my other courses. Let's say, um, actually, why don't we do this? I am going to start a new class for the year. So I'm going to click plus create class and at conference. So that's this year's class that I'm working from. Now I'm going to hop on over into my Tech Conference 2 course. And how am I going to save my work from last year? I did all this work on that. I don't want to lose it. So here's what I do. I click on the plus button. I click reuse post. And here's the beauty. You'll see right here I've got my uh, archive classes in here as well. So I can hop into that course. It'll show me what work is there from last year. I click Reuse. Gives me a chance to do any editing that I might need to do there. Okay. And then I go ahead and add the Ask button to it for this particular question. So now I start with a fresh version of this question, in this case, or that assignment. But, but importantly, my students don't have to see all of last year's first. It's very timely. I can put my due dates in as I go. So this would be the recommended path for you to move forward. And just like last year, uh, this Google Classroom, just like all of the other ones, 
actually has its own folder where all of the student work will, will be uh, dropped into so you won't have to wade through all of that. It really is a much easier process for you to wade through it and feel like you are starting fresh without losing all of your key work. And so that's what I'd like to share with you today. Go ahead and get started archiving your courses, being careful not to delete them, but then reuse those really good posts that you had from last year so you don't have to redo that work. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them to the Instructional Technology Coordinator team.